Okay, so this is the Black Line Safety G7C training. So first of all, I'm just going to kind of go through what G7 is. So it is a work everywhere wearable personal safety monitor, which does include gas detection. So some of you might have purchased gas, some of you may not. And as you can see, our three devices are there on the screen. So you can see standard, single gas and quad gas. Um, we do have 18 hours of battery. There is two-way texting capability on the device, which is awesome. And we also have the two-way voice communication, which is available upon purchase. So if you're not sure if you have purchased the voice, just check in with your managers and I'll let you know. Um, but this is an additional feature that is purchased for you to have on your device. Um, we can locate you on a real-time map. So when there is an emergency situation, we can see who you are, where you are, and what type of event is happening, and then contact you directly on the device and basically get you help. Uh, we can also deliver instant uh, situational awareness. Uh, so basically, if we get information that we need to evacuate you or there's severe weather warnings or your manager's called in to the SOC, which is our safety operations center, uh, we can then uh, send messages to you on your devices and get you out of that situation and evacuate you. Um, if you're self-monitored, your managers can still do that as well. And I will talk about service in a second. And we're basically going to manage the fastest response time uh, with your devices, which is awesome. Okay, so these, uh, this is just a little bit about us. Uh, and like I said, I will touch on the service type. So who are we? What do we do? Um, so we are based here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, and we are a global connected safety technology leader behind G7. And we basically have a really uh, fun, friendly team of designers and engineers that uh, basically create and manufacture everything in house, which is awesome. We're one big happy family here. Uh, we offer services in over 100 countries. And we currently monitor over 25,000 employees around the world. Uh, and we have recorded uh, 26.5 million hours of equipment use and have managed over 850,000 customer alerts. So we're doing well. <laughs> and you're in definitely uh, good hands with Blackline for sure. So that's just a little overview of the company so you understand. Some of you, you know, may not have known some of these facts. So it's just really, um, it's just really good to know. So here's the different service plans. And it's really simple. You either have, uh, you're either self-monitored, which means basically your team monitor your devices. So your managers and supervisors would be managing the alerts and calling you and texting you and making sure you're okay. Or you've purchased, your team has purchased the Blackline monitored service, which basically means that our in-house safety operations center, SOC, will be monitoring your device 24 uh, seven, 365 days a year until your uh, service is up. 99.5% um, of the alerts are responded to in under one minute. Uh, so we are for sure gonna get through to you and get you help uh, very quickly. And that's the difference between the services. So if you're not sure, just check in with your team or call into customer care and we can you know, let you know the service if you're unsure. Okay, so let's go to the hardware details on the device. Um, so if you do have your device in front of you, that's great because you can kind of look around it as we move. I also have one here as well. So when we look at our device, um, I'm just going to kind of start work my way up. So on the device, we have our power button here. This is to turn the device on and off. We've got this nice big red latch. This is to pull if you need help. Um, then we've got a screen on the device, which is great because our device tells you um, what's happening on, on, your, on your device. It also tells you how to manage alerts. Um, it's a really, really cool feature. Um, it basically, yeah, tells you what to do and how to manage it. It's awesome. Um, then you've got these two arrows and an OK button. The two arrows navigate up and down the menu, and they also are used to silence alerts as well. And then the OK button allows you to get to the menu and to flick through the menu and, and OK to enter into different sections to do things, uh, which is pretty standard for an OK button. Um, and then as we kind of move up, we've got the speaker here for where the voice call comes in if you've purchased a two-way voice. And then um, up the top here, you will have a sure safe uh, green uh, light, which basically uh, just communicates to you that you're currently connected and that your device is is, is working. Um, if we go to the back of the device, we've got a product label. On the back of there, there is a unit ID. That is the unit ID that's been assigned to you. Um, if you're sharing devices, that's fine. But if you're singly assigned to this device, 
then please don't swap devices around because all of your information is saved to your particular device. If you need to put a label on it with your name, great. Um, however, if you do accidentally swap a device, that is okay. You can call into our customer care and we can make sure everything's adjusted. Um, you've got your charging port at the bottom of the device, that's where you charge it. And then you've got your belt clip here to allow you to clip the device to your chest or your hip. Or your hip. And I will go through uh, the placement of the device as we get further in. Okay, so let's power on devices. So if you do have your device on you, you can do this with me. So when we want to start our shift, we simply want to disconnect from the charger. And then I want to power up by pressing on the power button once. And you're going to see some lights start to flash. And at the top there, you can see my uh, sure safe light starting to flash, which means I'm connecting. And then as soon as I've got a solid green light, it means I've connected. Don't panic if you do have a blinking green light throughout your shift. Uh, this is your device just trying to reconnect. So don't panic if it's for small amounts of time. If you're constantly flashing, you know, for four or five hours a day in, in the in the areas where you work alone, then we need to reevaluate if this is the right product for you. So just don't hesitate to call into customer care and review some information with it if you're not sure. But that's obviously when you start using the device in the field and things like that. Um, but there are workarounds and things that we can help you to do uh, that as well. So my device is now connected. So I now have a solid green light, which means I'm ready to start my shift. Um, okay, so a couple of things um, with our device. So we have, oh, we have bump and testing calibration. So bump testing calibration. Just bear with me for a minute. My device is going to go off here. That was a warning alarm and I'll explain to you what that is in a second. So bump testing calibrations, as soon as I've turned on my device, you might hear a warning alarm, which you just heard now. That warning alarm is basically letting you know uh, that something is happening on the device and you just simply need to read the screen. Hence, if you're using gas detection, it's probably your bump test is due. So just read the screen, see what it says, and then go forth to acknowledge it. So here is what, what do I do? So you just simply press down on the two arrows for three beats to silence the device. And this basically has said, yep, I've read the screen, I've acknowledged it, and then you would bump your device or calibrate it, and then you can continue with your shift. So here are some examples of, of how you can bump and calibrate. So you can do either way. One is you can use our G7 dock station, which is an accessory and it's available for purchase. And the, the dock station is like a triple threat. You can bump, calibrate, and charge, which is great. You just put your device into the, uh, the dock, you close the lid, and it will ask you, do you want to bump or calibrate? You select OK to which one you would like to do, and then the G7 dock will do its thing. Uh, bumping takes about a minute, calibration, two minutes. So it's really not long. Uh, the other alternative way, which most of us will be doing, is manually. So you simply go to the menu, you press OK. So basically, you always want to put your device into bump or calibration mode first. And the way to do that is to get to the menu and put it into the bump or calibration mode. So I press OK. I get to my menu, and then it's going to ask if I want to bump or uh, calibrate. So if I scroll down, hopefully that will uh, go in. So you can see I've got bump or I could go down to calibrate. So either one I want to go into, I want to select it, and then I want to press OK. And then it's going to say continue with bump test, and you would say yes. Now once I said yes, it's going to say OK, start applying the gas. So you always want to make sure you've got your, um, your tube with your calibration cap on the device ready to go. So, um, so then the gas can start to flow in once it's ready to bump. So it's pretty, pretty standard stuff. It's pretty easy. You just attach the cap, you're ready to go, go to the bump or the calibration mode, press OK, and the device tells you what to do next. So it's pretty simple. OK, so once I've completed my bump or calibration, and remember, this is only for gas detection users, so we might have non-gas and gas users uh, watching this training session. Um, so if you're non-gas, you don't need to bump or calibrate if you just have a standard G7. But once you've turned your device on and you've done that, next you need to wear it. So you can either wear it on the belt or the chest pocket. Make sure it's firm. Um, you know, a flimsy kind of work shirt 
that's 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 pretty light for our for our uh, device. So you want a nice firm pocket for it to uh, attach to. Um, our device has been specifically built and tested to be worn on the hip or the chest. So if you wear it anywhere else, the device it might get a bit confused. So you always want to wear it on the belt or the chest. If you leave it unattended while powered on, it can possibly lead to false alerts because the device doesn't know it's been left unattended. The device just thinks that you're not moving. So it's so important to wear it at all times. Now, our device is configurable. So it does have sensitivity settings and timers and things we can enable and disable and adjust to custom into your working environment. So when you start to wear this device, bearing in mind or, or just remember that we have set up what set points we think will work good for you based on other examples that we've used in the past that have worked well. But remember, you're the champions of the device. So when you start to wear it, give it a few days and get warmed up to it. And then once you've been wearing it for a few days, then you can start to think, is this device too sensitive or not sensitive enough? And then you can go to your manager and say, yeah, I keep getting fall detections because I'm really physical in my job and I've given it a few days and it, it seems to be going off a lot. So can you help me manage And they'll be like, yep, yeah, we can totally customize it to your working environment. So that's why it's so important that you wear it either on the chest or the hip, because if you're not, it's going to be really hard for us to adjust those settings if it's not being worn in the, in the correct placement. Okay. All right, yellow pending alarms. So yellow pending alarms are safety alerts. So full detection, check-in, no motion. So here we go. I'm just going to give you an example of what they sound like. Here. Okay, so here's a pending alarm. Full detection, press on the latch to check in. There we go. So it's as easy as that. <laughs> My device detected something, whether it's a fall, my check-in timer was due or my no motion, but it basically asked if I was okay. I looked at the device, it told me what to do, I pressed, I pressed on the latch, end of discussion. My device will not escalate, I've told the device I'm okay, we move on. With our um, full detection, this can be adjusted. Uh, your check-in timer can be adjusted, so you can have anywhere from 50 minutes to three hours, um, so you can adjust when that comes in, but as soon as you've got that timer set, so let's say you go with a two hour check-in, you can have your device check on you every two hours, so that's when it will come in. So as soon as you start your shift at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., you'll get a check-in, you'll see that, and you'll press on the latch. Just so you know with the check-in, you can also do an early check-in if it's configured on your device. So talk with your manager to double check this, but an early check-in is basically allowing you to check in early, so you don't have to wait for the timer to come in. So if I press on my latch for a duration of three vibrations, I've now checked in. Great, reset my timer and it's not gonna disturb me for another two hours, for example. Also with our, um, with our device, we also have an auto driver check-in. So if you think about it when you're driving along, let's say you're on a highway, cruise control, smooth roads, you know, you might think, oh, is my check-in or my no motion going to come in while driving? Because I'm not actually physically moving, but my vehicle is. And that's uh, that's one of the cool features that we have enabled on the device, which is called the driver check-in. So what this does is if you're driving above 35 kilometers an hour or 22 miles per hour, depending on where you're from, um, what it says is it the device says, okay, if you're driving above these speeds, I'm not going to uh, ask you to acknowledge a safety alert because you're in motion, you're moving, you're fine. And it's simply just that. It's just basically checking you in automatically while you're driving so you don't have to hear it come in and do that. So that's what it does. Um, also with our check-in timer, uh, we also have a backup. So if for those of you that are using the check-in, great. And if not, I encourage you to do so because if something else happens to your device, so an example uh, that an employee gave me on one of the sessions of the question was, okay, let's say I don't have a cell phone or I'm not allowed a cell phone and I'm solely relying on this device and there's no forms of communication and something happens to my device, let's say, I don't know, I forgot to charge it last night and it dies down. Well, the good news is our device only needs three hours for a full charge if it's at zero. Um, so it won't take long to charge, but if you are in a predicament where it did die down or something happened to it, we have the backup check-in. 
So if you do have this enabled, your check-in, whenever it's due, will still come in and will still go to the safety operations team as a missed check-in. And then we get to uh, basically raise awareness that we've got a missed check-in for someone that you know we can't communicate to. So we can't get a hold of you, obviously, so we call your manager and say, yeah, we couldn't get a hold of Victoria. She's got a missed check-in. We tried to call her on the device. It appears that it's offline. Nothing's connecting on our end. So, and our last, her last location was here, and this is where we're at. And the manager will be like, "Oh, great. Well, thank you for making me aware of this. You know what? Let's not dispatch, but let's some let's send someone to check on her, maybe." So what it does is it raises awareness versus you're out there, you know, for a few hours. Maybe your vehicle broke down as well, right? You know, these things happen, and now you're kind of hooped, but it's been you know, the check-in has still come in to save the day kind of thing. So it's a really cool feature to have enabled. Um, so those are the pending alarms. Pretty, pretty standard. Uh, your fall detection can be adjusted. Your no motion can be adjusted. Most companies go with a five minute no motion and the sensitivity setting is also in there. So remember with no motion, uh, it's going to feel movement. It's going to feel vibration. It's going to feel you coughing or moving. So don't worry that Five minutes is pretty low because that sensitivity saying is going to be, you know, feeling all of those movements. Um, if you want to adjust it, let's get you guys wearing it first and then let's evaluate it after you've worn it, you know, for a few days. Okay, pending alarm. So now what happens if you don't tell the device that you're okay? What happens next if you don't respond? Well, that yellow pending alarm goes to a red alert. And the red alert, and I'll show an example of a red alert shortly here, um, but the red alert basically has now gone through to the monitoring or your team, etc. and there's no going back. Once that red alert is on, uh, we're now going to respond to you. So here is an example uh, of a red alert. Oh, okay, I'll just... Uh, Paul, I'm just going to give you an example. So here's a red alert, an example. So this red alert has now gone through to monitoring. Like I said, we cannot uh, cancel it, but you can definitely silence it. So what do I do? We silence it by pressing down on the two arrows for three beats. So here we go. So what I've done is I've silenced my device, but I have definitely not canceled it. No way. All I've done is, is, is silenced it. So with that uh, device, um, I will talk about the SOS alert next. And then we'll talk to you about the response. Okay, so with an SOS alert, um, this is basically you guys calling for help. Um, don't hesitate. If you're ever panicking or anything, you just pull that latch, pull that latch, get yourself help, and we will be responding to you uh, quite soon. So I'm going to pull the latch. Red alert. Now remember, what do I do? Well, you don't need to do anything. If you're, if you're in a situation, you just pull the latch and someone will respond to you. So for now, so you can hear me, I'm just going to silence it. So remember, it doesn't cancel it. Okay, um, with moving on to our gas detection. So we've talked about the safety. We've talked about an SOS alert. Now I want to move into the gas. And then, uh, like I said, we will be touching on the response things of it shortly. So with red gas alerts, you simply get a red alert that comes in, just like pulling the latch, red alert, and you evacuate. So if you're working away and it suddenly goes into that red alert, just get out, get out of that situation immediately and then you can read the screen. So on top of here, we've got stale, high alert, TWA and over limit. These um, are the examples of the alerts that could come in for your gas detection. Um, you may not be using all of them or you may, but these are the four alerts that we would respond to. So again, when your device goes into a red alert, evacuate first, then read the screen, and then you can silence. 
Now, this is what happens next. So we've talked about the safety alerts escalating to a red alert. We've spoken about the SOS, so pulling the latch, red alert. And we've also spoken about the gas high red alerts that could come in and, and basically get you out. So what happens next after that red alert? Well, it, this is what's called the live response light. This light is basically a flashing blue light. So if you think of an ambulance, right? Police, someone saving you, blue light. Um, so this blue light comes flashing in, which basically means that someone's gonna be contacting you very shortly to confirm you're okay. So what do you need to do? Nothing, you just sit tight and you wait for that person to contact you. So if you do have the two-way voice calling, we're gonna be calling you. And if you don't, that's okay, because we can immediately text you. So here is an example of the blue response light. And then it comes. So now what would happen is a voice call would connect. It is a live call center agent speaking to you and confirming who they're speaking with you. Do you need help, etc. If not, we'll send you a text. So I'm just going to send you a text. Um, which brings me into the warning alarm. So we'll go over to this screen so you can see the section that I'm about to tell you. Warning alarms. So warning alarms do not escalate. They are simply an alert that comes in to say, hey, read your screen, something's going on, and you can respond. But it doesn't escalate. We've already spoken about the escalation section. So one of them is a text message. So while we're right on that, on that section there, I'm going to send a text message to the device so you can see live how that comes in. So it says, are you okay? First thing I want to do is I want to press on the two arrows. And don't worry if you accidentally take your finger off one, it will still accept it with one hold of one button if you accidentally slip. I just want to make that clear. Okay, so now what do I do? So I've just silenced the message. So now I want to go to the menu because I want to respond, right? I want to tell these guys that I'm okay. So I'm going to press the okay button. I'm going to go down to send message. I'm going to press okay. And I'm going to find the message I want to send. So maybe it's send help or maybe it's issue resolved or maybe it's false alarm, right? Everything's fine. I just didn't get to it in time. These things happen. So then I'm just going to press OK. Sending. Done. Now, if you listen in the background here, that's us receiving your text message pretty quick. So once we receive that, you'll get another message coming back saying, understood, we're going to resolve the alert. So you'll get a second message confirming that. If you send, for example, send help, we'll send you a message saying we're sending help. So we'll always communicate to you back and forth if you don't have the voice calling. Okay, so once we've spoken to you on the device and everything's okay and we've resolved that information, we are then going to uh, resolve your alert. So resolving your alert just requires us to close that in our system and therefore the blue light will go out. If your blue light is still flashing, don't worry, we're just probably typing up some notes. Maybe we spoke to you quite for quite some time and you had a question about the device. And please do, I mean, our safety operations team are very uh, equipped with knowledge on the device and, and understand things and you know that you might be getting used to it. So if you guys have any questions with the SOC team, SOC team when you're when you're on the phone with them or, or whatever, please do uh, ask them. Okay, so let's go back to our warning alarms. So um, network connection interruption. If you get this yellow warning alarm, it's just letting you know that right now you're disconnected. Now remember this the device flashes green if you're if you're disconnected and remember the device just doesn't give up the device constantly is trying to reconnect so i don't want you to panic if your device is flashing green what i do want you to consider is talking to your manager about whether you would like the network connection interruption alarm enabled so basically if you don't notice your device flashing green would you like an extra little nudge 
and have an alarm warn you potentially after 10 or 15 minutes of it flashing. You know, I've got mine set to 20 minutes. If, I, if I'm not connected within 20 minutes, I'd like to know about it. For example, everyone's different. We have some customers using five minutes, some customers using half an hour. It really depends on, you know, what works best for your team. Low battery. This is basically a warning alarm saying you have a low battery on the device. So remember, we've got 18 hours. If you get a low battery, you're going to have about four to five hours left on the device. If you're like, oh, I don't need to know that much, we could decrease it and maybe put it to 10% and you get notified when you've only got two to three hours left on the device. So let your manager know. We can customize this. Uh, voice call. So if we need to initiate a voice call without an alert, you'll receive a message for that as well, like a voice call is incoming. So for example, if you're just working away and the manager says, I need to evacuate my guy and we need to call you directly, you might suddenly get a warning alarm letting you know that a voice call is just about to come in and you need to be prepared and ready to, to talk. And remember, you don't need to press any buttons, it's just going to come in, but we're just warning you to let you know that the voice call is coming in. Uh, bump test calibration and low warning alarms for gases and things like that, those three are just for gas detection. So if you have gas detection, this whole strip of uh, alerts, warning alarms, sorry, are configured to you. If you don't have gas detection, it's just new message, network, low battery, voice call. So bump and calibration is, as you saw when I first turned on my device this session, I got a warning alarm for saying you've got to do your bump. So that's what that is. So you go ahead and you complete. Now, if you acknowledge your bump or calibration and you do not complete your bump test and you carry on with your day, I mean, you can do that, but it will show up in the reports that you didn't complete your bump and calibration that day. Low warning alarm for gas. So um, we get a warning alarm for that. We get a warning alarm for a sensor error or an under limit. So whenever you get a low warning alarm, like I said, sensor error and under limit, and the low warning alarm is just basically saying you've got a low amount of gas. So it's just letting you know we're at this level. So you'll read the PPMs and write. If you get a sensor error, it's going to be a big X on the screen, and it's basically saying there's something wrong with the sensor. You could power on and off or maybe do a calibration. Or under limit means the baseline has shifted. Again, power up, up and down, you could try calibration. But don't worry about any of this. Call into customer care. That's what our team are here for. We don't expect you to remember everything. And please do use customer care. They're part of your service. They can do a lot of troubleshooting over the air, online, and help you immediately before determining you have a defective device. And anyone that's having issues with the gas sensor and the cartridges, they are replaceable free of charge within your service plan. So again, please call customer care. They're here to help you on anything. And I point over there because they're over there. <laughs> okay, so just a reminder, warning alarms are non-escalation. So if you don't get to it, it's just going to continue warning you every couple of minutes that you've got a text or you've got a low battery, right? So that's what that does. Okay. So messaging. Uh, with send messages, we can send a message to you. You can send one to us. We can evacuate you out. Um, like I said, press OK. We went through the messaging section I showed you. Now, a couple of things that you guys uh, should know about with the messaging. These text messages that you see in your device are pre-configured. So the good news is you don't need to go up and down and left and right to try and put in an A and then a C, you know, none of that. They're pre-configured, they're in there, ready to go, so you just find it and send it. Great. If some of you find that, you know what, we could really use a message such as send tow truck or vehicle maintenance or anything like that, if you see some messages that you could really benefit from that you don't necessarily want to pull the latch on, I mean, you can always pull the latch for anything, right? But if your team started to discover after using the device that you could use something a little bit more custom, we can do that. Totally, we can do that. So let us know, let your manager know, get them to give us a call because we need to make sure that everything's configured with your escalation and everything matches up and is uh, set in your system. But this can be done. So I just wanted to let you know that as well. It's a pretty, pretty cool device. Okay, powering off. So at the end of your shift, at the end of my shift, I want to make sure I have a solid green light because this means I'm connected and everything can be sent through. So I must make sure I have a solid green light in order to shut down. 
If your device is flashing and you shut down, you may get a missed check-in if you have the check-in enabled. So please make sure you do turn off with a solid green light. So press, press the power button for three seconds. Okay, and it says black line logging off. And as you can see, my device is starting to flash green, which means I'm powering off. And then whenever I'm ready, I can place it on the charger. So remember, 18 hours of battery for that. Uh, and to charge it, you only need three hours. So you've got your cable, uh, your, yep, your cable, your clip. And then that just clips in. Now I know that everything is connected and working because A, I can see the light, and B, I've got some bars that are showing up on my screen as well. So my device is pretty fully charged, so I'm good. You can leave it on the charger overnight, that's absolutely fine. But if I have, you know, maybe one bar, I know I'm probably gonna need, you know, the three full, the, the three hours, right? And that's it, it's on the charge, it's powered off, we're good to go. Now, a couple of things, uh, or one thing, if your device is online and you forget to power it down and you place it straight onto the charger, it will automatically power down to prevent false alarms. Because obviously, if I leave this guy unattended on the desk, a no motion may come in. So that's why we automatically power off if, when it, as soon as it hits the charger to prevent that for you. Remember, please, to always charge it after every shift. Especially if you're sharing devices, we want to make sure the next guy's got a nice full 18 hours. You know, maybe he ends up working a double shift, you know, so you want to make sure we have that 18 hours in there. So before we get to questions, I just want to give you guys a quick recap. So in the morning, whenever you start your shift, disconnect your device, press the power, put press the power button and wait for a solid green light. You may get a bump or calibration that comes up to say you've got to do this today or you might not have that configured, that's fine. But step number two, once you've done that, is then place it on your chest or your hip, and off you go. You don't need to worry about it. If your device flashes yellow, read the screen and see what's up. If it's red, evacuate, because it's, it's obviously a, a gas alert coming in. Um, at the end of your shift, make sure you power down with a solid green light, and then we're good to go. Okay. So uh, I just want to share with you the uh, support blacklinesafety.com site. Please visit this site for all extra training information, videos and tools, and one page like help guides. It's, it's a really awesome site. Go have a look. And then for any technical support, please contact our customer care team. So our toll-free number is 1877-869-7212. So just make sure you take down that number. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining this training session.